Okay, just counting down. One minute here, guys, to do our conference streaming overview. I'm ready to get started. Okay, getting close here, getting close. All right, let's rock and roll. Everybody, Paul Richards here and today is Friday that means we're live streaming and today we're talking about conference streaming it seems to be coming up all the time so we said hey why not let's do a little video talk about some tips and tricks for conference streaming so we do have a free guide on our website which I'm going to navigate you guys to to show you where that is it's just a complete step-by-step -step guide it's a four-step guide where you can go in and just get some tips and tricks from you know we've done a lot of conference streaming in the past uh, I wanted to mention that obviously I don't know if you've been watching the shows lately but we've been doing charitable donations every single Friday and the way it works is by default we give $20 and then for every like and subscriber we get during the live show we add an additional dollar um, up to $50 now here's the new cool thing that our president said it was cool for us to do if we hit our $50 maximum which we did last week we will match it and send it to an additional charity um, he really likes the CASA, which is a court-appointed court special advocacy where they help children um, in need who are appointed by the court to uh, kind of take over where their family left off um, and help them guide them along the way, be kind of their adult um, who speaks on their behalf when it comes to, you know, children who might be getting in trouble with the court and everything. So uh, last week we donated $50 to the Susquehanna Casa. And then this week, if we can get to our $50 um, level, we will actually be going ahead and uh, contributing another $50 to another local Casa chapter. Um, and you can actually email me at paul.richards at haverford.com at huddlecamhd.com and you can actually uh, suggest a charity of your choice and uh, we'll be rotating uh, you know, the choices that our, our viewers are watching. So part one of a conference stream is obviously the setup, the equipment that you're using. The good news is that you can do this with a laptop. Can't really see this, but there's a laptop right here doing all of this. Everything you're seeing is being done by a laptop. I'm actually doing it right now, live video production. So that's the really nice part about all of this is that it can be done with any computer. You probably do want an i5 or an i7 processor, uh, a, a solid internet connection, and we'll talk about uh, testing the bandwidth at various locations. You can test that at speed.huddlecamhd.com and we suggest like a two, to meg two megabit up and down. Um, but that's the setup here. So it's nice to have a joystick controller. We, we're showing that off there. Um, our joystick controller is $299. You can daisy chain the control to multiple cameras if you want to have multiple cameras. This might be overkill. Um, and then there are ways, which we'll talk about, um, to automate camera control based on who is speaking. And to do that, we will mention in uh, setup part two here, um, we're going to have a whole section of this webinar on audio and you can actually switch um, the camera presets and or different layouts based on audio, which is kind of a cool thing. So we'll talk about that in this setup. You can see we've just got an Intel Nook computer. Um, we've got an audio source. There's an audio mixer there that's going from USB 2 to the uh, computer and then you can plug in XLR microphones, you can plug in wireless microphones and we're going to talk about audio just coming up next. Of course we have an HDMI connection to a television so that we can see what we're doing. Um, you may not need that if you have a laptop, you've just got your, everything on your screen there. And then USB connections with the huddle cams for video.
So you can pretty much set something like this up for less than $1,000 and then go up higher as the quality is needed. So part two, which we're going to talk about, is all the audio and the audio switching. So I actually brought with me today three different microphones for us to look at. So let's take a closer look at some of these. First of all, not sure if you can notice, but I am wearing a head-worn microphone. This is the best kind of microphone because it does not attach to your shirt and potentially ruffle. It definitely gets right up to the, the, the user's mouth and it's, it gets you the absolute best clarity for audio. So that's the best option. That's option number one. Option number two would be to pass around a handheld microphone like this. Um, one of the things, a little tip that I learned not long ago, is that these uh, handheld microphones act like a flashlight, and they are really, really good if you use them right. What I mean by that is that, think about a flashlight, it has a cone coming out from the front of it. You really do need to speak right into the microphone for it to pick up good. So if you're holding it like this, it's going to be a very faint, it's not going to, that's not the way this microphone is designed. A lot of people will hold it kind of like out in front and around and it does not pick up well. You want to put it right up in front of your mouth like this. So that's the first thing. So you've got your head worn, you've got that, and then one of the most popular ones, and, and I think it's just for aesthetics purposes, is this is a lapel microphone. I'm going to actually use our camera. Why not zoom in? So set this as preset one. Zoom in. And as you can see, this is a Shure lapel microphone system. So one of the things people really like about this is the fact that it is um, completely wireless. So you can put this anywhere. Go back to my normal setup here. Um, and you can put this, clip this right onto somebody's shirt. And you can have like two or three or four or six of these out in the field. Or eight, you can have a bunch of these out there and um, bring them all back. Now, one of the things with conference streaming in particular is that you're probably going to want to have your microphones wireless unless you already have a bunch of microphones out on the table to um, connect. So we'll talk about wireless microphones as well. But this is really the third option. And then the final option would be uh, an easy option here would be like a huddle pod air, a conference phone. So if you've got like a table, a small table of people, that will work actually quite well. And um, it's your third option there. It's the least expensive option. And that uh, does work quite well. So those are your the four audio options that I wanted to just discuss. Each one has their pros and cons. Um, so audio is kind of big. And you can see in this picture here that we've got three microphones and we're saying audio switching. Well, there's quite a few programs. We're not going to be able to go into all the details of this, but feel free to contact us to learn more. Basically, um, we can do audio switching uh, based on a microphone input. So part three, so assuming that all the audio is set up, all the video is set up, your cameras are set up, now you've got to stream and or record your live stream. Well, part three is just, just streaming. You've got a lot of options here. We've done some videos on uh, reviewing some of these different ones. YouTube is a great free one. Um, when it's free, you know, you do have to realize that YouTube's going to monetize your content for you. Um, most of the paid ones here allow you to monetize your own content. And, um, you know, all of these are really good. Twitch is more for gamers, so if you've got a, you know, you're streaming a game concert, that would be good. But um, Ustream is a really professional one by IBM, where you can monetize your own content. You can insert ad rolls. You can insert play, uh, pay now buttons. All kinds of enterprise options. Um, Streamspot is a great one. Decast is one that's been around for a long time. Wowza, there's a bunch of these. But you have to choose one, and you have to stream to it, right? So that is something to consider. Um, it's not very difficult to do. And the way it works, I have a little um, diagram here, is you send an RTSP stream to your content delivery network. So those are two terms you should probably familiarize yourself with. RTSP, real-time streaming protocol, and CDN, content delivery network. So those are you know, the two main streaming aspects that you're going to want to do. You've got your video production software. Maybe it's Wirecast. Maybe it's 
XSplit. There's a bunch of them out there. And you send that RTSP stream, and I would highly recommend a hardwired connection, not over Wi-Fi, streaming out to the uh, cloud to your content delivery network. Then from there, the content delivery network distributes your um, your video and audio to be viewed by thousands and thousands of people without flooding your own network. So, with that being said, we get to part four. And part four, well, yeah, part four, we'll go to part four and then we're going to talk about some local, more local stuff. So, part four is the recording. So, most of the content delivery networks can record your, um, it can record your live stream in the cloud. So um, record, you can either record it on the cloud or you can record it locally on your computer. And you can do both at the same time. So you can record and stream at the same time. It's not a problem. Um, with that being said, you're probably going to look at your CPU usage and make sure that you have just enough CPU usage so that you're not tapping it out and you're able to um, really, you know, not, not, stress over your system because recording onto, let's say, um, a solid state hard drive might be easier than one of the normal spinning disk drives. So it depends on your hardware, it depends on your processing power. If you can handle it, I would suggest, especially for important, important meetings, to um, record locally and that way if there's something that goes wrong with your stream or your bandwidth, you've got your backup. But if you don't have the processing power to do that, uh, rest assured that YouTube and all the other content delivery networks will not only stream but also record your um, content. So that's your that's your that's your setup your option there. So audio really ends up becoming the most important thing here, and um, all of the microphones that we talked about can be wireless. So this is what I'm using here. It's a, it's a, it's a microphone from DBA called Define and it actually is used by, you know, movies, Broadway, it's the top 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 of the line. And you can hardwire plug it into a USB mixer, which is actually what I'm doing now, or you can pl actually plug it into a wireless a uh, belt pack. And the belt packs look exactly like the lapel we, we did. It's actually, it is exactly this a little belt pack. You slip onto your belt and you can plug in various different types of microphones. Now, right here, we have a lapel. You guys can see that. And you could just get a connection for a head, head worn. And that really is the absolute best. Um, in fact, the absolute best would be a head worn directly connected into your computer. So even the wireless you know, could have a teeny bit of degradation. It's not much, but just saying, you know, absolute best would be hardwired, head-worn microphones. The next most popular for sure is these little wireless systems. You can get them in a single or a double channel wireless receiver, and they usually pair together with a belt pack. And like we said, you, if you get a system like this, you can really plug in multiple different types of microphones. There's head-worn microphones, there's lapel microphones, there are cardioid, super cardioid, and we don't have time to get into all the details of that, but this is what, ideally, it really is an ideal solution because most of the time, you know, you've got your cameras in the back that can zoom in, you've got your computer, you're plugged into network, you're plugged into power, and the one thing that you want to be battery powered and wireless is um, out there in the, in the crowd. Now, one of the things to know about these is they are battery powered, so they're almost always 9 volts. You want to definitely get name brand Duracell or Energizer 9 volt batteries, and you want to make sure they're at full because these things can eat up batteries within two to three hours, they could be gone. So you don't want to start a, um, a one or two hour conference with half the battery life. You want to just recharge, uh, change those batteries, and uh, use fresh ones. And um, that is the one major concern is that they're not going to go for eight hours. Um, don't leave, when you, when you put them away, don't forget to turn them off because I've done that a million times, left it on, and the batteries are dead. Finally, the HuddlePod Air might be an ideal option for you. Uh, the reason why is because you can go 35 feet wirelessly, it's USB plug and play, it's $299, and it has a seven hour battery life which is rechargeable. There's a rechargeable battery inside. The audio pickup is not going to be as good as a head-worn microphone. Um, it will be close to what you'll find with a lapel, except you're not going to have to worry about any of the ruffling or anything. And it can pick up a, an area from 8 to 10 feet wide. So if it's a little conference with 3 to 4 people, you can actually put this right in front of them and capture fairly good audio. So that's one option. It comes in white and black, slash kind of a grayish color. You can see behind me. And that is a really good option. 
So now what I want to do is I want to show you where to get our, and we'll take a quick look at our conference streaming guide. And we're using a little video conference call to do so. So basically from any of our uh, camera pages here, there's a little button down here that says free guide to conference streaming. And you can go in here. I think the only thing you absolutely have to type in is your email address. Download the free guide. And it's going to give you a download button that you can click that. So this is a free guide to conference streaming. It goes over everything we just talked about from um, the introduction, to the setup, to uh, the audio, to the streaming, the recording, and then some additional resources that you might find helpful. So I just wanted to take you guys there so you knew how to get there and download this guide, which will give you further information on you know, what we're talking about here. If you want to take some of this home, if you want to print some of this stuff out, that would be the way to do it for sure. Um, and that's all I have today for you guys. So hopefully that was an informative session on conference streaming and we got to go. I actually recorded this um, so that we can go live in three minutes and then I will be back for question and answer. Thanks everybody.